Some people are of the opinion that we need to pull ourselves together and stay at home. And some people say governments wrongfully take away our liberties. So then, what's the best thing we can do? Discussions are going crazy these days. They're getting more heated and, you know, it seems like the separation between us grows stronger and stronger. In some places, denunciation now is the new norm. That's totally nuts. What times do we live? What year do we have? I mean, yeah, there's positive things happening as well. But I think in difficult times like these, we have a chance. We have an opportunity to learn something, to grow. And more importantly, the question is to raise, what can we do? Because crises like these, they require a team effort. The last few weeks have shown exactly this. So I think what we should do now is to find out where we can agree and, and how we can act together. Because we all have things in common. Nobody wants to fear a virus and nobody wants to live in lockdown either. I'm sure everyone has their opinion and a right to voice it, but let's not point fingers at others. That never has helped anyone. Some people are of the opinion that we need to pull ourselves together and stay at home. And that the people not listening to these rules are the reason we have such harsh restrictions in the first place. And yeah, our governments are enforcing the lockdown more and more. That's true. So then, what's the best thing we can do so that we don't end up in even stricter rules? Do you want to point fingers and call the police on them? Wouldn't that make the protests grow stronger and the separation even greater? In times where we need to work together? Isn't there enough fear in the air already? And what do you do when the economy crashes even further? Isn't the system that tells us to stay home killing itself at the moment? Do you think it will be any easier to stay home when poverty becomes the norm? <laughs> Domestic violence, depression, anxiety, all that is going through the roof in a recession. And from where do you want to take the funding for research? For viruses, for example. Our current system is based on growth. And without growth, which we currently don't have, the system collapses, creating poverty. And poverty makes it more difficult to stay at home. And then forget about funding for research when you have hardly any money to feed the country. A gift economy would kill two birds with one stone here. When we give without expectation of return, we create community and community creates understanding and solidarity. That's what we need most right now. And that approach is scientifically proven to be more effective than an approach of fear. Whether the fear is of a virus, a police or something else doesn't matter. So then when profit isn't necessary anymore because we're encouraged to work for each other instead of for a system, then our basics, basic needs can be covered. And that way it's much easier to do what it takes, for example, to stay home, to be solidary. And then you can invest your time into research for viruses, for example. And yeah, of course, that's a long way off to change things to a new system, but aren't we changing already, right now? So while we're in the process, why not get rid of a system that is destined to collapse? and with its collapse drags us down into poverty. And some people say governments wrongfully take away our liberties. They plan something dark and that we should fear a totalitarian state. And in fact, Edward Snowden warns us of a takeover and we can already see that surveillance increased a lot. If that is true, what is the best thing we can do? Well, I think when you work for a company, and you notice that a company is acting against your will. What do you do? Yeah, you can rally against them, but does it make any sense to protest against something and then continue working for that same company and supporting it? Nah. What's the first step you would do? You would quit. You would simply stop participating. And any other protest is futile. It makes things even worse in this situation because it steers up the anger of other people on you and legitimizes the lockdown even more. So the best way to gain freedom would be to stop supporting the system, to remove dependencies, simply by peaceful non-participation. I mean, that's the best protest there is. It's, haven't we learned anything from Gandhi? Don't put oil in the fire, take their fuel away instead. 
Yeah, I'm talking about the, the economy, of course. Everyone knows the economy is dictating our politics. So the best thing you can do is transition towards an economy that doesn't make you dependent on the people that act against your will. And some of the key points of a gift economy are decentralization and togetherness. Again, a solution that would get you where you want to be. But yeah, whatever we do, let's not point fingers and find scapegoats. Let's stop these senseless discussions about who's right and who's at fault. That just drives everyone mad and that makes enemies instead of well-needed friends in this situation. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, discussion is super important and information shouldn't be held back either. I'm also not saying you should take things lightly, but what do we try to achieve here? Do you want to create separation or understanding? What is the strategy here? We have things in common that we can act on together now for the benefit of both sides. Let's focus on that. Any little act of kindness repeated a million times makes a huge difference. A good way of non-participation is to invest in people where the return is not taxed or paid with interest. The gift economy is just that, 